Possessions like the one on your screen prove that the product of Arkansas's and 2022 Summer League scoring champion Moses Moody has massive shot-creating upside. Right here, nothing's brewing at the end of the shot clock as newest Laker JTA hands it off to Moses on the weak side, then clears out by slipping the screen. As Kevon Looney decides whether to set a pin down or on-ball pick, Moody hits Devon Reed with a step back, a moving crossover, a moving hesitation, and another cross, then receives a beastly on-ball from Loon, getting switched on to the reigning two-time MVP. Instead of going into the full dribble combination he just went into, Moses hits the Joker with merely the one step back which initiates his signature combo, using it to get the first step past him. Only problem is, Nicola stays attached to him, plus Austin Rivers comes over to help, but watch how Moses beautifully splits the double by pushing the ball through both defenders, calmly stopping on a dime after using his downhill momentum to fade back and hit a Dirk Nowitzki-esque fadeaway on the baseline. It's amazing that Bob Myers used the last pick in 2021's draft lottery to rob a player who would be selected number 5 or 6 overall in a redraft, the same organization that passed on Stephen Curry twice in 2009's NBA draft in the Minnesota Timberwolves, gave up a first round pick which turned out to be Jonathan Kaminga, and also the eventual second option in a championship run Andrew Wiggins in exchange for D'Angelo Russell. Stephen Curry's gotten vengeance on not merely the Timberwolves, but as you'll find out, rivals on the court who've disrespected him. Before continuing, according to YouTube's analytics, only 9.2% of you watching right now are subscribed, so press the box and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Also leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Follow me on Instagram at dflowhoops for NBA mixtapes. Now into the content. Stephen Curry only needs a tad bit of disrespect to motivate himself and Damian Lillard learned that the hard way. I've got respect for Dame, having met him back in 2016, but he may have been single-handedly responsible for one of the greatest single seasons of all time from Steph. Let me explain. In the first month of 2021's NBA season, which was only four games given the late start due to the pandemic about two years ago in December, Curry's efficiency was down, which was leading many to start the narrative that the post-Kevin Durant era was hurting his production. Damian Lillard agreed with that talking point and took it a step further after beating the Warriors in the first of a doubleheader against Golden State, as Dame said this about Steph, quote, he's seeing that it's tough to get those quality looks right now, it's different than what it's looked like the last four to five years, end quote. In short, Steph was having no part of that nonsensical narrative being spewed, and with the chance to prove Lillard wrong in the very next game, Curry took full advantage of that opportunity. The chef put on a vicious career best performance on Lillard's head, scoring 62 points on 31 shots. But the two-time league MVP wasn't done there. He seemed to keep that sentiment from Dame in the back of his mind all throughout the year, winning the scoring championship by posting a 32 point per game average on a ridiculous 65.5% true shooting mark over 63 outings. He was the only reason why the Warriors qualified for the play-in where the Dubs would ultimately lose two straight to the Lakers and Grizz. But nevertheless, 2021's version of Curry was one of the most dominant players in modern day history. Insanely, Steph kept up a 42.7% three-point mark while averaging 12.7 of those deep range shots attempted every game. In that season before this past one, Curry broke about every three-point record in the book, but the most impressive accomplishment was becoming the first guard since Michael Jordan in 1995-96 to score at least 25 points on 50% shooting in nine straight games. More intriguing than the revenge Steph exacted on Damian Lillard by responding to the hate and having an all-time great campaign occurred against another rival at the point guard spot in Chris Paul back in 2019's playoffs. Prior to Game 6 of that year's Western Conference Finals in Houston, CP3 reportedly had Steph kicked off the court in H-Town. Steph was scheduled for a one-hour session, but Paul reportedly found out about it and wasn't having any part of it. According to Marcus Thompson II of The Athletic, Golden State Director of Ops Eric Hausen scheduled the time slot, but word got back to Paul, and he decided to travel to the arena to take the time for himself. Hausen and Curry reportedly made a counter offer to split the court, but Paul would decline. Steph obliged and left the court, but this was far from a victory for Chris, as with the dubs up 3-2 in the series looking to close it out, SC outscored CP by dropping 33 points in the game, 
And after Golden State ended up winning game six, 118, 113, this video of Steph celebrating with Draymond began to circulate. The greatest shooter ever clearly took that blatant disrespect from Chris personally, but really it's just one of the many times where Curry's used an act of wrongdoing or a false talking point from a rival on the court or a media member as nothing but a means of motivation. Over the course of the Durant years, despite people claiming that Curry was carried, and claiming the Warriors were an unbeatable super team, you had so-called respected mainstream talking heads like this calling out Curry one time after the other. As you'll see, Steph responded to those clownish takes just as often as they were made. The Cleveland Cavaliers are gonna win the title again. Curry, three, bang! What we really, really don't want is Steph Curry to once again look scared on the same court as LeBron James. To Curry, in transit, Curry finds some room, fires, and hits! James trying to harass Curry, Curry off the dribble, layup, off the glass! The Warriors are scared of the Cavs. Yeah. If the Warriors make the finals, they can't beat the Cavs. 71% of Steph's made shots in the 2022 NBA Finals against the Boston Celtics were unassisted on, and he made a blistering 60% on mid-range shots. Since 2013-14, Steph's fifth season in the NBA, when he became a first-time All-Star, he's posted averages of 27-5-7, and seven, made eight more All-Star teams, including eight All-NBA teams, while becoming a two-time MVP, a four-time champ, a Western Conference Finals MVP, a Finals MVP, and a scoring champion. Then you've got the portion of fans stirring up the talking point stating that Curry's had an easy path to achieve his championships, which can be responded to with this fact. During his first run to a title in 2015, Curry became the first player of all time to face and beat all four first-team All-NBA members within that season. That defines how tough it was for Curry to carry the dubs to their first ring, which permanently legitimized the Warrior organization. What's the sweetest bit of revenge Curry's exacted throughout his career? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout, and the top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by September 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Last video I asked, what's the best trait in Kawhi Leonard's bag offensively? Black Hole Bob gets the shoutout for saying, it's gotta be his severely underrated mid-range game. I mean, his finishing forces you to shy away from him at the rim, and his solid three-point ability forces you to step up and take away an easy jumper. Then boom, he rips through getting to the baseline and pulls up like a prime MJ or Kobe, RIP Mamba.